Hello. Hi, my name is Devansh Modi and my project for research methodology is emotion recognition from speech. And professor is Dr. Trevor Tomesh. So these are the topics that we are going to discuss today. That is introduction, data set, methodology, results, discussion, and conclusion. So introduction. So human mind is a complex machine. Uh, uh, and most of the machine these days lack emotional intelligence. So what do you mean by emotional intelligence is the ability to understand the emotions in a way a human being can understand. So emotion recognition system using voice are one of the latest trends in the digital markets. Uh, the examples of these systems are Alexa, Google, uh, voice assistant, etc., Cortana, etc. These assistants are widely used nowadays today for the day-to-day -day human computer interaction tasks. Uh, so, as these devices are just a com like a command and follow devices, just they follow the command. Uh, like if the user says turn on, switch on the lights, uh, uh, tell me the temperature of the room, etc. So in that way, these are just the command follow devices. They don't. Uh, understand the emotion behind the sentence spoken by the human beings so these devices uh, lack the emotion understandable uh, uh, or the human instinct to understand the emotions and similarly as these uh, devices lack the understanding of the human emotions uh, they respond in a simple harmonic tone rather than the changes in the harmonic tone expected uh, when in a real conversation with a human being okay so uh, emotion recognition systems existing today can detect uh, basically six types of emotions uh, that is neutral sad happy disgust angry and fear uh, based on the imagination there can be tons and tons of applications of the emotion recognition system so few of the applications based on uh, my imagination are anger or stress management or uh, limiting the speed in the autonomous vehicles you know uh, based on the voice so if the vehicle detects that the person is angry or you know the person is uh, sad or the person is distressed uh, so and basically uh, if th that's the case then the speed of the vehicle can be reduced uh, automatically to avoid the accidents uh, then detecting the mood of the person and then marketing companies can uh, detect uh, the mood of the person and based on the mood they can uh, recommend them products or sell their products cops can use to detect fear and voice so so basically if there is someone uh, someone on the call who is calling uh, a 911 and the person who is receiving the call it detects oh it has some some sort of fear in his voice or the machine detects it. if there is some fear in voice it can uh, directly alert the officer that oh, that something might be wrong right so as uh, so these are the few applications that that i can imagine or that uh thing that uh, potentially are but there can be many many tons of applications of the emotion recognition system so you yeah, have used uh, i have used the four data sets uh the the reason for using the four data sets for the project was to have a um, combination of the different accent dialects and uh, different uh, harmonic changes in a in a single data uh, in a single uh, whole bunch of data set so this way i have the combination of um, the all the uh, fe different features that are related to the voice and it can it helps me to achieve a universal compatibility as i have a, a multiple data sets like the combination of these four data sets I have the, all these four data sets are, uh, are recorded by different persons in different uh, harmonic, uh, harmonic uh, uh, pitches and it, the, all these four data sets are in different, uh, uh, the, I have different accents and different formats. So uh, if I'm building a model, um, uh, it is important to have a combination of different accents, different, dial uh, different dialects, and different harmonic changes to achieve a better output in real time testing right so that's why i'm using the four data sets in a combination so these are the links to download uh, these four data sets 
Okay, now methylology, coming to the methyl methodology section, what I'm doing is like if you have an input speech or input audio file, any audio file, any speech file, what I, what, what I do is I extract the audio features. So, so what are the audio features that are extracted? That uh, these audio features are a uh, zero crossing rate, chroma shift, MFCC, that is null frequency structural coefficient, root mean, square energy rmse melt spectrogram spectral roll off spectral centroid spectral contrast spectral bandwidth and tonnets so apart from just extracting the audio features and are they also using the data augmentation techniques now as my size of the data set is very small so these data augmentation techniques help me a lot and the uh, data augmentation techniques that i use is the addition of noise stretching the audio shifting the audio and changing the pitch of the audio. So once all of these audio features are extracted, okay, then they are split into the ratio of 80% training, 10% testing, and 10% validation. Then the 80% training data goes to the emotion recognition model, okay? So the emotion recognition model is trained on this 80 percent data and it is validated at every checkpoint on this 10 percent data and at every checkpoint the the model you know or, or the model that gives the highest accuracy for that particular checkpoint is saved so say we save the best model with the highest validation accuracy at every checkpoint okay uh that's uh yeah and it keeps on repeating uh, uh until we get an early stopping condition so okay so if, so, uh, if i put random 500 epochs and i put an early stopping condition so if there is no further reduction in loss then it will stop at uh, a stop after the 20 epochs based on the early stopping condition but this is the thing so we have a data we have a training data we train the model every epoch and the, at every epoch or checkpoint, the model that gives the highest validation accuracy, that particular model is saved. Then after the training is completed, we evaluate the performance model of the model on the 10% of the testing data. Okay, So as you can see, there are uh, six emotions that we are uh, predicting for the input audio sample. So once the model is trained and everything is done, we uh, we take an again, we take, again take an audio sample or an input speech. We extract the audio features from that input sample, uh, input sample, and we pass to the emotion recognition model. Then, from the list of six emotions, the model predicts the one of the emotions. So, in this case, you can see uh, there is an uh, input audio. There is a waveform. You can see the waveform of the audio, and then the features extracted okay then the extracted features were given to the emotion recognition model then there are a list of six features and out of which it predicted the emotion as fear okay so these are the loss and accuracy curves and it can be seen that the training accuracy is increasing and it becomes stable after the 150th epoch and you can see the uh, training loss is uh, constantly decreasing and you can again see that it's uh, still decreasing after the 170th epoch also uh, so this is the classification report uh, in the classification report the 0 1 2 3 4 5 is, uh, uh, stands for the different emotions right uh, and as you can see in the classification report, uh, it's all the values are above 0.5. That means it is uh, near uh, 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 near to the uh, 100%. Uh, that means it has uh, it is uh, given uh, approximately 75% accuracy for the uh, individual classes, right? So you can say that none of the classes are, uh, so they can say all the classes have a good classification accuracy uh, based on the classification report for emotion recognition then there is a confusion matrix for the emotion recognition and again this you can see the training accuracy of the model is 99 percent testing accuracy of the model is 75 validation is six okay and this is the com uh, comparison with the some of the um, some of the papers of the authors then you can see that my model uh, my emotion recognition model gives the highest validation of accuracy, the highest validation accuracy of 76.12, uh, 
and testing accuracy of a 75.96 so that is highest than any of the authors in comparison for the research work so the discussion uh, will discuss the discussion so my custom emotion recognition model gives the highest accuracy uh, compared to the other authors the model is very accurate uh, the model requires real-time uh, uh, audio in noise reluctant environment so this means that the model will give accurate output until and unless it is in a noise reluctant or you can see there is no background noise in the environment because background noise in the environment can hamper the output so currently i have not implemented the audio segmentation because it's again a big module to be implemented so audio segmentation can help to reduce this background noise effect and it can achieve an effective uh, emotion recognition also right again uh, it is uh, difficult to develop a universal model because uh, it is difficult to achieve a universal compatibility because we require that much amount of training data and it needs to be trained uh, for the different amount uh, for the different languages and the different accents and the different dialects so a model trained for english or french may not work for arabic or chinese language right so we require a mix of all these languages labeled properly with the respective emotions to be trained uh, uh, first and then after the training is done it can be successfully tested for the unsupervised environment right then uh, we had uh, then there's uh, one more lacking that is called as the audio net embeddings so as we have uh, embedding for the uh, textual database like glove right similarly for images we have image net so, then we have the places 365 then we have the sun so, so that way we have the different embeddings for the images similarly we need the embeddings for the audios currently we have do not have any embedding for the audio databases or the audio inputs right okay so uh, to test the universal compatibility of my motion recognition model right i tested on some of the unknown audio samples in different languages uh, so basically i wanted to test my model in an unsupervised environment what if the, if the, if i don't pass the labeled input okay if i just pass the audio sample and i wanted to test in uh, test in the different uh, audio files in different languages and in an unsupervised environment so I tested for a, a sample size of 100 and uh, uh, 317 right so the total number of samples that I tested you know and which were in different audio languages and in different dialects and accents and it was in kind of an unsupervised environment for my model so those samples on which I tested were 1317 and out of which my model predicted 289 samples correctly uh, so that means that the model is a universal compatible but uh, it requires more and more training on different uh, audio sets to achieve a higher throughput these are the references uh, uh, which helped me a lot in figuring out the modeling of the design architecture and the other steps uh, for my motion recognition model. Now I'll come to the conclusions. So I have successfully implemented the motion recognition algorithm to recognize emotions from the audio. I recognize uh, six types of emotion. To build a universal compatible model, large amount of training data is required. So currently I just have 12,000 rows, you know so and it takes a lot of time with extracting features so we need approx a a million or more than a billion number of rows and in different audio file and audio uh, audio formats audio languages etc to achieve a universal compatibility right also we can combine the facial and the text-based model uh, but this can slightly increase the computation power uh, required instead if we can increase the data size of the uh, audio based emotion recognition model we can still achieve a universal 
model, right? So emotion recognition can take the automated systems one step closer to a more human-like response to a voice stimuli. Uh, thank you. Uh, now we'll look at the short demo of the project. So now we go through a short demo of the project. Uh, so, this a, so these are the libraries that I imported. Okay. And this is a, one of my decorator functions. Okay. And this is uh, the wrap this data set uh, pre processing function, crema data pre processing function, test data pre processing function, savvy data pre processing function, and this is a fetch data function which calls all these uh, Reva, Reva test, crema test, savvy, and combines the output of those into the one data frame and saves it. Okay. This is the data augmentation for noise, uh, stretch, shift pitch and this is the extract feature functions which extracts a zero crossing from a shift mfcc rms simul spectrogram roll up centroids contrast bandwidth tonnets as a get feature function so with which calls the above all the feature extract function that is a, this function combines the original features with the data augmentation features and returns them and this is the audio feature extract functions which one by one uh, takes the audio file from the audio path uh, and with its label information and it stores the extracted features for that particular audio file okay then we have this plot then we have the plot graph function then we have the additional preprocess function here we carry out the eda and we can see that we are replacing sadness with sad happiness with happy so this is done basically to have a uniformity in the label or the number label or the emotions okay then we are splitting the data set into 80 to 10 and 10 right in the ratio of 80 10 10 then we have our emotion recognition model which is a resonant kind of architecture so you can see the residual blocks over here Okay. So then we have this audio HTML function, which is nothing but an HTML JavaScript interface. Uh, this get audio function calls this HTML JavaScript interface, and what it, it, and at the end this uh, thing invokes the microphone of the user, and this microphone events invoked records the audio. The recorded audio goes to the motion recognition model, and then we get the predicted outcome. So this is the get features function. Get features function is used for the real time testing, right? So, and this is the test real time function in which we load the emotion, our pre-trained emotion recognition model, and then we test it on the real time input data. Then we evaluate the model. So this uh, evaluation of the model is done on the test data set once the model is trained. Okay. So this you can see this is the main function in which we call the uh, audio features final function in your emotion recon we build our model and we save the model which gives the highest validation accuracy at every checkpoint and then we evaluate the best saved model okay now let's uh, I'll, uh, I'll show you a small demo of how the emotion recognition from speech works so we'll call this function So you can see the output of this thing, right? So we have label, you can see the output of label or emotions present in the data sets, right? So to maintain the uniformity, we converted the sadness to sad, right? And happy, happiness to happy, right? Likewise for the all the emotions. And you can see that the surprise and calm, uh, the, the number of samples were very less for those two. So we dropped uh, those two emotions out of our list and then we carried out the other processing for the remaining emotions right and as i mentioned in the classification report the zero one two three four five none are nothing but the set of emotions so you can say that the zero emotion means angry one is disgust two is fear three is happy fourth is neutral and fifth is sad likewise right 
So now we'll click on this function, uh, then run this function. What this function will do is invoke the microphone of the user. It will record the audio and it will tell uh, what's the emotion of that audio. So let's do the demo. Okay. Hi, how are you? What are you doing? So as you can see, if you want, you can uh, play this button also. And you can see now it is doing the pre-processing in the backend and it will uh, give the output in some time. And you can see uh, what I, whatever I spoke, you can see the waveform of the word that I had spoken or the sentences that I have spoken, right? So you can either spoke a word or a sentence and based on that, it will uh, it will give you the predicted outcome. Also, you can uh, listen what you, uh, what have you have uh, spoken, that is the sentence or a word. And you can come to know that there is the was there in background noise present or not in that uh, particular recording. So you can see uh, it predicted emotion as neutral. Yes, because my, uh my voice was very casual i was not uh you know i was not shouting i was not fearful i was not sad i was i was in normal state so it, it predicted uh, neutral that's absolutely uh perfect and you can see the model worked uh, superbly for an unsupervised environment in which just i uh gave my audio sample as an input and it predicted the uh, emotion right hmm. So this was just the basic testing for the unknown audio samples that had, uh, so this had collected the data from the internet just to check the universal compatibility of my model. And, and again, as you can see, uh, and as I mentioned in the results, uh, for out of the 100 and, uh, 1,317 samples, it uh, gave correct answer for 289 samples. So that means my model is uh, universally compatible to some extent uh, to make it 100% universally, com universally compatible. It requires to be trained on a huge, huge amount of data and requires a lot of GPU and computation power. Uh, but still uh, keeping into and considering all these uh, challenges, my emotion recognition uh, model has outperformed the uh, research work done by the previous authors in this area, and it gives better accuracy than those authors. Uh, so this is a big improvement, and my emotion recognition model is complete, and it works perfectly, and it gives uh, accurate output in a uh, lot of scenarios and covers lot of things and it's uh, uh, universally uh, universally compatible to some extent yeah thank you